There's a difference between choices that change an outcome and choices we care about. Hindsight 2020 Wrath of Rakshasa completely misses that distinction. It's an action-adventure, choice-driven RPG that constantly presents high-stakes situations to make you think you're making decisions that matter, but they don't. There's no reason to care about the people, the world, the main character, and consequently, the choices. Multiple endings are an intriguing reason to keep playing, but the destination cannot bear the weight of unnatural and contrived consequences, monotonous and nonsensical combat, and an overall awful presentation. You follow Jehan, a warrior who fled his hometown and has returned to right his wrongs. But the city is struggling with a disease that turns people into bloodthirsty creatures known as Rakshasa. There's a staunch no-killing policy, so the people don't know how to handle the pandemic. The story sounds like it should be loaded with varying opinions on how to deal with the infected, but the choices are binary. For example, a woman says your best friend has been infected and thinks you should rescue him, but he's guarded by the person who killed your father. Your options? Save your best friend or decide you're not ready to face your father's killer. Choose the latter option and you end the game. Choices like these occur throughout hindsight and remove or simplify the humanity of most of the characters and choices. Many of the consequences feel unnatural or contrived also. Take this fight with the sheriff while trying to save your best friend. If the fight takes too long, your best friend commits suicide. Sounds like something that could happen, but I didn't know he was suicidal. Had I known, I wouldn't have fought the sheriff. I had no say in how that played out, but the consequences is presented to me like it was natural. Unexpected tragedies occur in real life, but hindsight is built on repeated unnatural consequences that trivialize every choice you make. Part of this disconnect comes from the characters feeling like strangers. I never connected to any of them. You're presented with tragic scenarios as if that's supposed to be efficient enough to connect you emotionally. Suicide is mentioned. Feel bad. There's a dying wife. Be sad. But there's no character development or backstory to help identify with their pain. Many of the characters signpost the consequences as if the developers are trying to convince us that that one choice is the reason why some tragic thing happened. It's a lousy tactic that cheapens the consequences. But the draw of hindsight is the ability to go back in time and change outcomes to unlock different endings. But after unlocking 4 out of 10 endings, it was hard to move on. Uncovering all the endings is an interesting concept. But after the first 5 hour run, then 2 hour subsequent runs, it became unbearable to slog through the boring levels. The dungeons alternate between rooms with enemies and solving ridiculously easy and annoying block puzzles. The puzzles, if you can even call them that, do nothing but act as roadblocks. You can solve all of them in less than 30 seconds just by observing the patterns. You also have to engage in a lot of awful repetitive combat. You have a stun baton for non-lethal combat and a sword for lethal and rather bloody combat. Which one you use decides how citizens and enemies react to you, but they're merely vehicles for advancing the binary choices and strange outcomes that follow. The combat is absurd though. You can't damage enemies except on the third or sixth consecutive hit. Otherwise, you're endlessly poking or slashing at the same enemy. There are also specials that completely undermine the combat, two in particular that annihilate everything. This stun baton special and this sword special. Once I became great at knocking the yellow orbs out of enemies, combat became just activating my special and decimating everything just to get through the game faster. The presentation surrounding the choice-driven gameplay doesn't do hindsight any favors either. Executions look buggy and lack punch. And weirdly placed obstacles litter hallways. On higher difficulties, enemies don't take more damage, change combat strategies, or attack faster, they just deal more damage.
Once you figure out the attacks, they're easy to dodge unless you're being careless. The bigger enemies are the silliest. This is all you have to do. Rakshasa and bosses bring a bit more challenge, but you won't have to change your battle strategy to beat them. Hindsight 2020 Wrath of Rakshasa tries to convince you that your choices matter and that you should feel bad about some choices and good about others, but they don't matter because you don't connect with the characters or the world they inhabit. Your choices change outcomes, but many of them feel unnatural or contrived, and most are signposted making it feel like the game is trying to tell you that choices matter rather than letting you experience the impact tack on an awful presentation and bland combat and you have the recipe for a game that ultimately doesn't matter. Hindsight Wrath of Rakshasa gets a 35 out of 100. Check out our YouTube for more reviews and gameplay demonstrations of the latest games, big and small. For other content that's not here, check out our website at GamingTrend.com.